Hi everyone, this is another video for Enneagram 4, and I have a couple thoughts related to um, the previous videos that I've made related to um, our sense of identity, um, our sense of perceptions, um, focusing on the negative historical repetitions that we may have experienced or even having major events coloring our self-perceptions of, of worthiness, our abilities to experience joy, um, probably skewed in negative lens. And so I'll throw in a little bit of, of brain stuff here. So when we're young, we're very vulnerable. So the brain functions in a way for us to see stimulation, things that we see, experience, feel, um, through the lens of survival. So our brain is wired to survive. We can either perceive events, people, things that happen to us um, in a way to help us survive or to make us feel safe. So these things happen where the primally, if something happens enough times, we're going to equate that, make correlations with the brain. Okay, this thing now is not safe. So I'm going to either avoid it or I'm going to be heightenedly aware or attuned to it now because in my past experiences, this has shown me that it's not safe. This has shown me it's some type of threat to my safety. So I'm going to be more attuned to things that are kind of negative or make me feel unsafe. And so this can kind of permeate our lens of life. Um, it affects our heart rate. It affects our relationship. It affects the way our body functions and how we regulate stress. So a lot of things happen very early on to shape how we see the world now. And so when it comes to our Enneagram or temperaments, different things to personality, culture, a lot of things that shape a person, very contextual things, um, they may bring up certain things in how we see ourselves. So as an Enneagram 4 who may think that, like I said in the other video, we may not be good enough to feel too much joy or to be too functional in life. And that may be something that we've practiced, whether it's something that we did on our own or we're socialized and shaped to do by our environment, um, some temperament or some response that people have been giving us within our systems that we belong to. It, it is complicated. It's hard to explain. There's no real why. It just happens, you know, and so it shapes our patterns. So the pattern that comes out of this um, again, based on the threat of safety or not being safe, is to, we're going to be dependent on others. We're not going to function too much because it's scary in the real world. We're not going to be brave and step out into our power because as the world has shown us time and time again, if you do that, it's not safe. We're, we're not supposed to go out there. It's, it's someone else will come rescue us. Someone else will be the over-functioner in the relationship for us. So we can just do minimal enough functioning to get by and that will help other people feel like they matter too because it's kind of like uh, potentially an enabling type of relationship where they get something out of it they may feel like wow it feels good to have someone rely on me and so hey as long as they're feeling good I'm going to continue relying on them so if you want to kind of step away from this pattern increase your awareness to see what's going on now it's a new lens of the world. Okay, so we're now we're looking back into the life, our timeline of how long has this been going on? What have I contributed to repeating this pattern? And now, how do I want to change it? If I could just have a magic wand and make it different, how much different would I make it? How, how much would I want to step into my true power and to be the person that I really am, my truth, my, my true essence, myself? Um, and these are things to think about. These are things to just let settle and take awareness of. Change is a very long process. Change takes trials and errors. It takes going backwards, going forward, going sideways, zigzag. You know, it, there is no wrong way unless you don't try, you know. Um, and doing nothing is not the same as not trying, by the way. So in my multiple videos, I've said that same thing where it's actually important to settle and let seeds plant, um, discard and clean what's going on, all that muck in your head um, 
to really prepare for change. So let's say we're going back to our perceptions of our identity, right? And this is about the pairing with the past. So fours tend to have a really strong relationship, like a strong negative relationship with their past. I can tell for me that most memories that I have, super negative, um, maybe blowing up a lot of things that are negative, and that kind of shapes my identity as like, man, life has been hard. All these things have been super hard. And yet, if I could look back through a different lens of joy and gratitude, a lot of good things have happened too. And so it's like me going back and forth and balancing. Yes, um, when I do share the timeline, a lot of people have said, wow, you've gone through a lot of stuff. But a lot of people have gone through a lot of stuff. I'm not dismissing that I have a right to feel and mourn um, the things that haven't happened in my life or the, the timelines that haven't come according to plan and having to adjust and feel bad and feel sad. I have that right. I do totally have that right. You do too. Um, the thing that I want to kind of raise awareness of, because that's the first step is, okay, can we step away from pairing this negative stuff with our identity? Because you are not the bad stuff that happens to you. And yet, we believe that we 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 really do ingrain that all the bad things that have happened all the negative emotions that i feel equates to who i am and that's a tendency for us fours us associated with shame twos threes and fours we have a really hard time separating events and circumstance from our identity so this video this long ramble um, comes to the conclusion of we are not what happened to us. It can shape our insights. It can strengthen us. It can um, give us more compassion, more joy, more gratitude. And yet, all these things are not who we are. We are separate from things that we cannot control, things that have just accumulated over time, especially the way people treat us. That is something I do want to, to highlight to to push. You are not how people treat you. If people see you a certain way, good or bad, you know, um, our identity, our worth as a human being is separate from how people see us and how people treat us. Yes, it does feel good to have that attention. Yes, it feels good to have that acknowledgement that my words help other people. It feels good to have um, some function in society. It feels good to help other people feel good too. It, it feels good to do a lot of things and have your art noticed, you know, um, for people to say something good about you. And yet, when you separate and pull all that stuff away, the interactions and the words and the exchanges and the history that you've had with other people, when you're just this isolated person, just you, are you still worthy of love, compassion, um, feeling worthy as a human being, and yes, you are. And that is the process. It's the part, the process of separation yourself from society, from these intangible things that really don't define you because you are innately loved. You're an innately worthy as like just you as a person. You are all of this wonderful goodness without any sense of exchange from other people. And that's what we tend to believe. If we contribute, then we're worthy. Mm -mm. You are worthy as you are. You're worthy, you're enough, you're beautiful, you're loved. You're just you, and that is perfection. You, you are made in a way that is beautiful and important. And, and then again, anything else that happens around that, good or bad, it's just your life circumstance that we take awareness of. And at the end of the day, when you take all of those things away, you are left with just you. And you are a beautiful entity that deserves love, compassion, goodness. You know, you're, you're worthy. And I think that something to repeat to yourself, you know, are these affirmations because it is hard to believe when your whole lifetime you've seen and received a certain lens of treatment from others or yourself. You know, you're beating yourself up from the inside. So 
I'm sure the words that I'm saying may be hard for some people to take more than others. Uh, I think in general, most of us, outside of uh, any Enneagram type, it's hard to hear praise and believe it. So take this video as uh, baby steps towards this, number one, awareness of the context, number two, awareness of the patterns, and then what you want to keep, what you want to discard, what identifies you as your true self and what doesn't. You get to choose now. That's your choice. You get to choose. And then another is to try to recite or listen to these affirmations and see how uncomfortable, see how much truth you can believe. You know what? I can believe I'm a little bit worthier today, or I can believe I'm, I'm beautiful today, just a little bit more, because Bruni told me I am. So please um, share your experiences and encouragement with the community. I look forward to hearing and reading your responses. Thank you so much. Take care.